right, what's up friends? Thanks so much for joining me on this very cold and snowy day here on Vancouver Island. And we're back in my kitchen because I have another video for you guys and it's about food. Like what else, eh? So often when I make food on here or I post it on my Instagram page and I mention that I've made like oil-free oven fries or oil-free granola or something like that, I'm always met with one of two questions from people and those being, why don't you use oil in your cooking and how do you cook without oil? So today I'm gonna to answer both of those questions for you. I'm first gonna answer the why, so why I don't use oil, and then I'm gonna show you how to cook without oil, I'm gonna show you how I do a stir fry without oil, how I make oven baked fries without oil, and then I'll give you a few other ideas on how you can make food and like other things without oil. So many oils. <laughs> So I've mentioned why I don't cook with oil in a few of my vlogs and in like what I eat in a day videos, but I thought it'd be good to just do a video on its own to help people because I get this question so often. So before we start, I just wanna make it clear that I am not demonizing fat in any way. This video is about oil. Fat is good for us, it is essential, we definitely need it. It's great for so many things, important for our hormonal function and uh, you know the absorption of certain vitamins, which we'll get into in a minute. But uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely eat a lot of fat. I eat like, you know, nuts and seeds and avocados, but I just don't eat processed oils. And then I've also met with a lot of people saying, Derek, you need oil in your food in order to absorb the fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K. And my answer to them is, you're kind of right, but not really. We need fat in order to help facilitate the absorption of those vitamins. We don't necessarily need oil. Oil is a fat and it can help, but there's many healthier sources of fats that we can turn to to help with the absorption of those nutrients. <laughs> Just put my hand in some beans. <laughs> so why don't I eat oil? There's definitely a few reasons. The main reason is just because it's really not a very good source of nutrition. There's a lot of calories in oil, but there's not a lot of nutrition. And you guys often hear me talking about nutrient density. Basically, what that is, is just like how many nutrients are in the food compared to how many calories it's giving us. And we wanna try and be eating as many nutrients as we can without taking in excess calories. And oil is definitely not a good way to do that. So one of the reasons why it's such a dense source of calories is because it is just fat. It's 100% fat. There's no protein, there's no carbs in it. And we know that both protein and carbs have four calories or around four calories per gram, whereas fat has nine calories per gram. So if you combine that with the fact that oil has had the fiber removed, all the water removed, it is like the most dense source of calories that we could possibly eat, giving us very, very little nutrition. And no, not any nutrition that we can't get elsewhere. And that's the main thing, like you could be eating nuts and seeds and avocado to be getting the nutrients that you're getting from oil with way fewer calories. Hope that makes sense. So just to give you an idea, one tablespoon of olive oil, I don't have any oil in there because I don't have any, but one tablespoon of oil has the same amount of calories, like around 120 calories, as one medium-sized yam. And you can imagine the nutrition that's in this yam versus in one little spoonful of oil here. And how much this is gonna fill you up over how much this is gonna fill you up. This is gonna fill you up so much more, this isn't even gonna make a dent in your appetite. Gotta keep checking on those, I don't want them to burn and they're getting really close. Whoop. So beyond that, it is a highly refined food. And we know that when you remove the oils from the protective coating of like seeds and nuts and other things, the oils become really susceptible to oxidation and going rancid. And we definitely don't want that in our bodies for trying to improve our health. That just leads to, you know, free radical damage and all sorts of other problems. So yeah, we definitely like don't want to be intaking any rancid oils. And it's really hard to know. Like a lot of the time they bleach them and they color them. So you don't really know you know, if it smells weird or whatever. Also some evidence that consuming oil damages the endothelium, which is the lining of our blood vessels. And those have many, many important functions. So we definitely want that operating at its full potential. So if you guys wanna learn more about why oil is not a health food, you can check out some of the links I have in the description and it'll teach you lots more. So another reason is I really just don't like much oil on my foods. I don't like how it tastes. I don't like how it makes the texture of the food kind of like limp and a bit drab. Yeah, it's just not for me. And you'll notice once you get away from using oil on your food quite often, you will lose that taste for it and you will find it to be kind of uh, a bit like offensive. It's just kind of like, man, it, this would be so much better if it just didn't have a bunch of oil in it. And now a lot of you are wondering like, how do I cook without oil? So I'm gonna show you that here. So I've got some potatoes that have been baking in the oven. I hope they're not burned. And uh, we're gonna check them out and I'll tell you guys how you can make them crispy without using any oil. All right, so here they are. 
and they were probably in there for like just a couple minutes too long, maybe one or two minutes, but it's really neat. Like there's no oil or anything on here. I've just sprinkled some seasoning on them and um, whacked them in the oven. And you can see here, like look at this one. It's even like puffed up uh, and listen, let's see the, the fries. Yeah, crunchy. I mean, they're not like deep fried like McDonald's fries or something like that, but you know, as good as you could want it. So the key to getting these crispy is to cut them all around the same size. So I know I have two different types here, but if you're making fries, you want them all around the same size. If you're making these sort of like discs or whatever the heck they are, I guess they're like chips, I don't know. Uh, then you definitely want them like the same thickness as well. Cause you want everything to cook at the same time. If you have some really, really small ones and some really big ones, small ones are gonna burn, big ones aren't gonna cook. Another thing is you have to separate them on the sheet. So if everything is like on top of each other and touching, the air isn't gonna be able to get around everything and crisp it up. So you definitely want to spread everything out. And you can see that there's a little space in between all of these. And then I find just baking them at between 375 and 400 degrees for about 25 to 35 minutes usually gets them just perfect. And I also made these to show you guys you can do them with yams as well, or sweet potatoes. I never freaking know. I actually talked to the guy who works at the uh, produce section at the grocery store and I asked them, I said, are these yams or are these sweet potatoes? Because my viewers always tell me I'm wrong. And he said, those are 100% yams. The sweet potatoes are the pale colored ones. These are yams. Anyways, I did the same thing with these, except for first, um, I actually tossed these in the spice and I just used some chipotle seasoning with some garlic powder and onion powder. And then I just whacked them in the oven the same as the other ones. So you can see they're all separated a little bit from each other so that the air can get through there and crisp everything up. And then this is also key. I should mention this for sure. This is a silicone mat and it looks a little bit sketchy because we've used it a lot, but I promise you it's clean. They just kind of like turn brown over time. And um, yeah, they're really handy to have. They're not overly expensive to buy and you'll be able to use them over and over and over again, basically like in, pa in place of like parchment paper or something like that. But it does definitely make things like nice and crispy. So even if you were to make like, oh, like some veggie burgers or something, and you put them on here, the bottom would still get like nice and crispy. And unfortunately, for some reason, the yam fries or the sweet potato fries, they never get as crispy as the potatoes do, but they're always just as good. So stir fries are another thing that people often ask me, how do I cook it without any oil? And it's really simple. I mean, you just don't use any oil, just use a splash of water instead, and you should be good to go. Like some things are gonna stick every once in a while, but I don't think that warrants like dumping a whole bunch of oil into the frying pan when I'm making a stir fry. You can also use vegetable stock instead of water and it'll help to like flavor your food a little bit. So I'm just gonna throw this stir fry on really quickly. It's like super simple. This is not like a luxurious recipe by any means. I have lots of stir fry recipes on here and other recipes if you guys wanna check out my other videos for some more delicious recipes. This is kind of just showing you how it all works. So I've already gone ahead and cut up a whole bunch of vegetables here and I've got some frozen ones as well and I'm gonna pop them into the frying pan and we'll see how it all works. All right, so I've already got the frying pan preheated. You definitely want a preheated frying pan to help the whole situation. It's heated to about medium high heat. You don't want it to be too hot. You'll burn your food. So I just throw in the frozen stuff first because I find it creates like a little bit of a buffer on the bottom of the frying pan uh, that allows things not to stick. You'll see. And then as I mentioned, you can add water or a splash of vegetable broth to help everything to not stick to the bottom. So you can see nothing's sticking. Everything's moving around just fine. So I'll just let that saute away for, it'll probably only take about 10 minutes or so and I'll just like stir it every, you know, two minutes or something just so everything doesn't stick to the bottom. And yeah, that's about it. Like you guys can see how easy it is. If you wanted to have something like crispy tofu with that, I think it would probably be best to bake that. Uh, tofu crisps up really nice when you put it in the oven with like, I don't know, some barbecue sauce or some sort of like sweet mustard like glaze on it or something. Uh, it turns out really nice and you can definitely get it crispy in the oven or in like a little toaster oven like we have here. So that's definitely your best bet if you want crispy tofu. If you throw it into a frying pan like that and it's just like a stainless steel one, it's probably gonna stick to the bottom. But I throw it in all the time and I just mix it around, just kind of scrape it off the bottom and everything's fine. 
So just while we're waiting for that, so just for what, so just while we're waiting for that to finish sauteing, I'm gonna talk to you guys about salad dressings and sauces because this is another one that people don't seem to understand that you don't need to use oil for. So you guys know like I have some videos that are on how to make amazing sauces and I'll put the links to those in the description down below as well so you can easily find them. Um, and that'll help you for sure. I have some awesome sauce recipes and I use them all the time and they don't use any oil. So most of the time I use water for the base of my sauces and then I'll mix in some healthy fats uh, in the blender and just blend it up and that's how I make most of my salad dressings. So tahini is a really good fat to add to it. Also avocado, avocado makes really thick and delicious salad dressings and sauces. Um, what else is there? Soaked cashews make some amazing creamy sauces that are so good. And another one is like steamed cauliflower. I've used steamed cauliflower to make different cheese sauces before using like cauliflower and nutritional yeast and a few other ingredients. So yeah, it's definitely like possible and not necessary to use oil and I don't miss it in my cooking at all anymore. So I know for some chefs out there and for some culinary professionals, it's getting really hard to like wrap your mind around it because oil is considered like a flavor carrier and uh, a lot of restaurants and a lot of professional chefs use oil like a lot. And once you kind of develop the methods and you kind of figure out how to get around that, it's really like a non-issue. All right, so this is all done now and you can see everything cooked really nicely. It's all really nice and bright. And um, it didn't stick either. Look at that. Mm. Really good. That's really awkward. So yeah, that is an official, no oil, Simnet Nutrition approved stir fry. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this would make a great meal, right? Have this with one of those sauces that I just mentioned and some of those fries over there. Man, that is a good dinner. That's what I'm having for dinner. <laughs> so now that I've told you guys all this and I've showed you all this, I should say, that sometimes I do have oil and I don't completely avoid it. Uh, if I go out to a restaurant or something like that, of course I'm not gonna get like the double deep fried like blooming onion or something, but if there's a bit of oil in a stir fry uh, or in a curry or something that I get, then I'm just gonna eat it and enjoy it. I'm not gonna worry. I don't go out for food like every single day or you know, all that often. But I think the main takeaway from this is that I'm just trying to reduce the amount of oil that I consume. I'm just not like trying to cook with it every single day because it can really quickly add up. You use a tablespoon in your stir fry pan when you're stir frying, 120 calories there. Uh, let's say you put a tablespoon or so on your salad, that's another 120 calories there. So right there in one meal, you can have an extra 240 calories and hardly even notice it. So I'm not trying to make everyone like calorie phobic or whatever, and often I struggle to get enough calories in in the day when I'm like really busy and not thinking enough about um, eating. But I'd rather get it from much more nutrient dense sources, not just like go to oil, <laughs> turn to oil and just eat that just for the sake of calories. So hopefully this video has helped you guys out and maybe answered some questions. And if it has, definitely give the video a like. It helps me out a lot because it tells YouTube, hey, this guy's good, this video is good, it's got some good valuable information, so they will bump me up a little bit in the algorithms and that helps me out so much. Definitely comment down below and let me know what you think. Are you guys oil free as well? Are you kind of like me where uh, if you're out and about and then there's some oil in something, you'll eat it anyways, but you don't cook with it? Or are you like full on Mediterranean diet, I'm drinking a liter of oil a day, I don't know, <laughs> let me know. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching this video all the way till the end, thank you so much. Definitely subscribe if you wanna see more content from me and hey, I'm always open to video suggestions in the comments down below. So let me know what you guys want to see as well because I love making content tailored to you.